the only claims that they do have is one white supremacist group that claimed that they can do property damage and get away with it while wearing surgical masks. They were also going to call themselves the lab coat killers, but I decided <laughs> against it. Uh, well, because it kind of sounded like they were going to kill doctors, right? And, <laughs> and they can't do that because in their racist minds, only white people are doctors. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if you know this, guys, but killing white folks is very off-brand for white supremacists. <laughs> not a part of their thing. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon uh, or directly on my website or via PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of this show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. So uh, in America, there's various different types of law enforcement, right? You have the Department of Homeland Security, which is supposed to keep the homeland secure. Mm. Right, you have the Federal <laughs> Bureau of Investigation, which is an investigation agency that tracks serial killers and only serial killers, according to the television network CBS. <laughs> you also have the Central Intelligence Agency, which primarily runs coup d'etats, lies, <laughs> and also used to employ the world's most dangerous care bear, Mike Pompeo. <laughs> <laughs> which is very nice of them to do. But you also, have, you also have border patrol, right? Which are basically keepers of the line in the sand, right? <clears throat> I feel like everybody that worked at border, control, uh, border patrol were like kids they used to call traveling and out of bounds in games of pickup basketball, you know? <laughs> like they took backyard sports a little too seriously. And look, as an, <laughs> as an immigrant and a less than average sports ball player, uh, I've never liked those kids. Kind of hate them. <laughs> but that's just, that's just on the federal level. Then you have local law enforcement, right? You have city cops, county cops, state troopers, the sheriff's department, the Department of Neighborhood Patrol, those cops that give kids a ticket because their lemonade stand is a little too close to the curb. <laughs> Yes, those guys. And even lower than that, you have parking cops, right? Meter maids. 
then you also have campus security who roll in cop cars ensuring that drunk teens aren't fornicating in the library. <laughs> they do that by tasing everybody in the genitals. <laughs> That's your preferred method. <laughs> and the lowest of low of all of the law enforcers is of course mall cops. <laughs> <laughs> America literally has more choices for law enforcement than birth control or education or health care combined. <laughs> the only thing that rivals the diversity of law enforcers in America is the diversity of reality TV shows. <laughs> but, you know, after the terrorist attacks of 9-11, all of these various departments decided to get together uh, and, and share their information to keep us secure, to prevent another terror attack. So across the country, agencies like the DHS, the FBI, and local law enforcement created these things called fusion centers. And unlike Asian fusion, uh, these places were an abomination and not friendly to the working class. <laughs> and unlike Asian fusion restaurants, these fusion centers had terrible lunch specials, you guys. <laughs> awful lunch. A lot of them involved immigrant detention centers, and that is that is not what you want for lunch. <laughs> but these fusion centers have actually been proven to be useless in terms of counterterrorism, and most of their efforts have been on. Uh, spying on citizens and attempting to infiltrate anti-war <laughs> activists and protesters. That's primarily what they've been doing. Now, this was one of the things that was revealed by the Blue Leaks over the summer. The Blue Leaks were uh, leaked by the hacktivist group Anonymous, and the leak was published to the site Distribution, Distributed Denial of Secrets, or DDoS, using a peer-to-peer -peer sharing technology like BitTorrent. That's right. The same technology that was once used by high school kids to get the new Three Days Grace album <laughs> is, is now being used to expose racist police. That's a big deal, you guys. We did it. That's called progress. Now, these, with this, this, of course, has the cops. They're singing, I hate everything about you to the hacktivists. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I can't sing any more of that song or else I, that, that'll, I'll get flagged for a copyright violation. <laughs> <laughs> One of the major privacy infringements came from Amazon's Ring, Right, the doorbell camera. According to the Blue Link, Blue Leaks, Ring gathers information about your house, your address, and sends real-time activity to any law enforcement intelli uh, or any uh, intelligence agencies as well. And this is a clear violation of the Fourth Amendment. Collecting data and spying on the American people was revealed by Edward Snowden. He, he revealed that the NSA was spying on the American people. They were collecting data. And recently, a federal court, I believe it was the Ninth Circuit Federal Court, have agreed and declared that what the NSA did was unconstitutional. Whew. So how is using advancements in doorbell technology, which literally a phrase I never <laughs> thought I'd say. That's, that's where we've come to, everybody. <laughs> BitTorrent is, is leaking po racist police information uh, and we're advancing doorbell technology. <laughs> <laughs> but how is this advancement in doorbell technology to collect data and spy on people any different than what the NSA did and not a violation of our Fourth Amendment rights? The simple answer is it's fucking not, <laughs> right? And, and, Law enforcement is using the terms protecting and serving us to cover their violation of constitutional rights. 
But more importantly, this also shines a light on the fact that corporations are working with law enforcement and are using consumers unwillingly to do so, right? Now, here's the thing. The average suburbanite who uses this technology in their houses isn't aware that Ring is sharing data with law enforcement, right? There, there, there might even be a lot of them that are perfectly fine with it, right? There, there is an overwhelming amount of people in this country that are completely fine with giving away their civil liberties in the name of safety and protection from invisible mm -hmm. enemies. But there's uh, quite a bit of people who see this as an overreach by the thin blue hands of the law. But look, we're in a pandemic right now, right? And we all need to wear masks in public, which has now rendered facial recognition <laughs> software completely obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now this is a problem only if you're part of the Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> 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 the DHS basically came out look and said, "Hey guys, look, wash your hands, you know, wear a mask, but can we all think about our facial recognition software for like just a little bit though, please, you know, because because we can't use that if everybody's masked up and we really want to we we really <laughs> would like to just every once in a while can you just like remove that mask and smile at the camera just so just so we know just just so we can use our favorite toys <laughs> now According to the DHS, because masks render facial recognition useless, this gives criminals a larger opportunity to, you know, be criminals. And this isn't just coming out of fear, it's also coming out of absolutely no data to back up their claims. <laughs> the only claims that they do have is one white supremacist group that claim that they can do property damage and get away with it, while wearing surgical masks. They were also going to call themselves the lab coat killers, but I decided <laughs> against it. Uh, well, because it kind of sounded like they were going to kill doctors, right? And, <laughs> and they can't do that because in their racist minds, only white people are doctors. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if you know this, guys, but killing white folks is very off-brand for white supremacists. <laughs> Not a part of their thing. I'm counting on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, now, the claim by the FBI is that these sort of technologies are only used to look for violence from opportunistic actors. And considering that no movies are being made right now, that makes total sense. <laughs> There are so many opportunistic actors out there, you guys. <laughs> but I don't think we should stop there. I think we should be looking out for opportunistic directors, producers, <laughs> key grips. <laughs> Look, the entertainment world is already a tough job market. And now that the FBI is onto, onto you, it, it, it's only going to make things a lot harder. <laughs> but facial recognition is a highly controversial matter. In 2019, the European Union actually banned facial recognition and biometric te technologies claiming that it violates human rights. Right? Facial recognition was sold on the idea of safety and security, but also to keep people a little scared. You know, you got to be scared primarily of being a suspect of like a crime you didn't commit. <laughs> Yeah, four out of five times, facial recognition software has led to false arrests, which means that people can get that warm, false sense of security. <coughs> but they can also get an irrational fear of cameras at all times, mm -hmm. which is fun. You know, cameras, they no longer just steal your souls. They also imprison you, like, forever. <laughs> Now, in 2019, Jason Tooley, a board member of Tech UK, said biometric and facial recognition technologies should be used in tandem with policing, not replace it. I mean, clearly, this guy hasn't been on a police stakeout. 
because that's doing both, okay? <clears throat> and despite all of this data about how ineffective facial recognition software really is, the DHS still wants to use it. And even though, even though they keep saying that masks are needed for our health and safety, they're going to take a cue from anti-mask protesters and cough on the Fourth Amendment. Mm -hmm. Now, these leaks also revealed that cops were being used by corporations as hired guns, right? Cops were being hired by corporations to protect things that were deemed as critical infrastructure, you know, yeah. things like pipelines and fracking equipment and <laughs> telecom towers, you know, not, mm -hmm. not things that are actually pieces of critical infrastructure, you know, like roads and schools and hospitals and froyo shops. These are <laughs> real critical pieces of infrastructure. <laughs> now, what they're doing is they're, they're enforcing laws that uh, prevent protesters and activists from pushing back on leaking pipelines and fracking companies under boilerplate laws that were written uh, by right-wing Koch brother funded leg a legislative organization called ALEC, right? The American Legislation Executive Council. And not only is this a horrific piece of legislation, but it's also a new show on the Fox network. <laughs> <laughs> Watch a whole bunch of scamps try to save the environment only to find themselves on the wrong side of the law. This Thursday on Fox. <laughs> There are also mercenary cops hired by the tourism industry that partners with hotels in certain cities. And this can only mean one thing, a new spin-off show called CSI Quality Inn. Quinta. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the show is going to be collecting spunk off of hotel linens to solve the crime. <laughs> that porn, right? It's kind of like if Dexter meets CSI meets Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I'm excited, you guys. Very excited. <laughs> There's also a group that's hired for shoplifting incidences. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm real excited to see the first season of Law & Order Special Retails Unit. <laughs> It's going to be a fun one. Not that one wasn't as big as this punk one. All right. <laughs> the leaks also identified courses that LA detectives can take offered by private surveillance corporation Palantir. Palantir is a company yeah. that has partnered with Amazon <laughs> and has been known to use facial recognition software to deport undocumented immigrants. So some of the course titles that these detectives were offered were uh, how to spot an immigrant, right? Italian or Indian, stereotyping shades of brown. It's a fun one. Uh, <laughs> recognizing faces, but not souls. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, everybody's favorite, how to love your Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, that class is, uh, that last class, very popular because it is 100% mandatory. So, <laughs> 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 Now, between using Amazon's Ring and Amazon partnered Palantir, Jeff Bezos is just kind of nuzzling under the bosom of Lady Justice, you know, whether she wants him to be there or not, because that's how bad boy Bezos do, baby. That's how he do. Okay. He takes whatever he wants, and he wants fucking everything. All right. <laughs> except, except a head full of good hair. That is... <laughs> It doesn't, a villains can't have good hair, you guys. If you want to be a good villain, you got to be bald as shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, as I mentioned earlier, the blue leaks were published on the DDoS server, which was seized by German authorities on behalf of America, right? The Germans were basically like, oh, you want to hide your dirty little secrets about persecution? We got you, bro. We totally got you. 
We are very good at hiding dirty little secrets. Go ahead, ask us about 1936 to 1945, because... <laughs> oh, my God. We don't know what happened. Oh, man, did something happen? We were all collectively taking a nap. Oh, man. <laughs> did something large happen? Perhaps dealing with six million Jews? I don't know. I couldn't tell. I don't know. That, that is the best German accent you guys are going to get out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the idea behind law enforcement is to protect and serve. And the Blue Leaks have re revealed that they're doing like a really shitty job of it. <laughs> These leaks show us that they're only protecting their own criminality and unconstitutional behavior. And the only thing they're serving are corporations and inanimate objects that are poisoning our planet. The, this only strengthens our need to defund the police and start funding more community-driven programs that are actually built on protecting and serving. Now, one of the more major things that the Blue Leaks revealed is the white supremacy problem within American policing. Over the past few months, we have seen an uptick in protests and demonstrations against police brutality and calling to defund the police. And we've seen this time and time again, where police are brutalizing protesters for protesting police brutality. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess the word irony isn't really something they teach at the academy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look, the Blue Leaks show us how uh, fusion centers were tracking Black Lives Matter protests all across the country, right? The Northern California Regional In Intelligence Center, or NCRIC, nicknamed NICRIC, partnered with Silicon Valley to do so. And by the way, does the name of this program not sound like a one-hit wonder from the 80s, right? <laughs> A little bit like, hey, it's Nick Rick with his brand Nick new Rick. summertime hit single, Tan in by the Shine of Your Heart, right here on LAW 98, your soft rock station, station of choice, because we're the only <laughs> soft rock station. <Right? laughs> it's kind of cute. I'd listen, I'd listen to that album. I'd, I'd drop a little Nick Rick on my. <laughs> Now, uh, the Nick Rick monitored social media feeds and even hacked into locked phones to track protesters. And this was part of the Terrorism Liaison Office, whose executive director claims that this was for the safety of the protesters. You guys, they were just trying to keep them safe. This is like when an abusive partner says they hit you because they care about you. You know? Like, I don't... I don't think they understand what the word care really means. Like, right. yeah, do you think you can care about me with like flowers and chocolate instead of, I don't know, <laughs> chemical warfare and psychological manipulation? <laughs> fun. Fusion centers often send suspicious activity reports or SARs. The goal of this report is to track suspicious activity in an area so everybody can keep an eye on it. But on the list of suspicious activities are Black Lives Matter marches, vigils, and protests. That's right. Vigils are on the suspicious activity report because according to the NICRIC, black people don't buy candles, you guys. That's crazy. Yeah, have you ever seen a black person at a Yankee candle? Yeah, no. <laughs> the answer is no, you haven't. And if you have, you're part of the problem because Nick Rick <laughs> doesn't see color unless it's a convenient PR move. Yeah. And look, marches and protests are suspicious because according to the Nick Rick, who would be mad about being protected and served? Doesn't make any sense. Very strange. Now the Nick, Nick Rick also sent out uh, emails to local law enforcement that stirred up fear about violent anarchist protesters using scary protester anecdotes from the FBI and the DHS. 
I would not want to hang out at a campfire with the FBI or the DHS, right? Like a lot of their stories would just end with, out of the darkness, we could hear, Black <laughs> Lives Matter. That's <laughs> the fucking scariest thing to them. Look, so if you're a new police officer, you already have this preconceived notion that all protesters are not just terrorists, but also uh, want to drink the blood of law enforcement by the pale moonlight. And not only that, but some of them can also turn into wolves at night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is why all those curfews were placed right around sunset. Smart. Makes Smart. sense. <laughs> but when it comes to racist and white supremacists, right, the cops give them a free pass. In fact, in some states, police work hand in hand with right wing militia and white supremacist groups. States like Alabama, California, Connecticut, Florida, which is a given, uh, <laughs> Illinois, Louisiana, Michigan, Nebraska, Omaha, Oregon, Texas, Virginia, Washington State, and West Virginia have been known to work with some of these groups. And after the tragic shooting of Jacob Blake, where an unarmed black man was shot seven times in the back by Kenosha police, we can go ahead and add Wisconsin to that list too. Kyle Rittenhouse, the 17-year-old militia member that shot protesters in Kenosha, was praised by the police that very night. The Kenosha police is heard to say that they appreciate the presence of the militia, which means that armed 17-year-old right-wing vigilantes that are willing to murder unarmed civilians are like a police officer security blankie, you know? Just carry that around everywhere. They feel, they feel safe with them around. In the video that went viral, it seemed that after Rittenhouse shot protesters, he runs past the cops, brandishing a loaded and recently fired weapon without arrest. The cops move past him and head straight towards the mostly black protesters because some of those protesters could have had half-filled water bottles, you guys. Right. Yeah, and maybe even a hand-painted sign. Look, I'll, I'll say this once, hydration. What about maybe skateboards? Possibly skateboards. They might've been fans of Tony Hawk, we never know. <laughs> Look, hydration is domestic terrorism, all right? <laughs> you know who was a big fan of water? Bin Laden. Jesus. There you go. No. And also no. Hitler. <laughs> Loved water. Now, it's not drank just Drank it every day, probably. You drank it every day. Seven glasses, that bastard. <laughs> How dare you? Now, look, it's not just cops that are sympathetic to the 17-year-old killer, right? Evangelicals are too. After GoFundMe took down a fundraiser for Rittenhouse's legal defense, a Christian organization used Give, Send, Go to set up a successful fundraiser. Now, they claim that Kyle Rittenhouse was undoubtedly attacked by anarchist protesters, but there's no evidence to prove such claims, right? Now for a group that undoubtedly says God is real and is everywhere, but we can't see him, but it's definitely for sure a he and also an older gentleman wearing a robe that lives in the sky. I'm gonna go ahead and doubt your undoubtedness in this situation. Go ahead and do that for a minute. Look, if, if you're an evangelical person, right? If you're a religious individual, let's think about what Jesus would do in this situation. He would probably march with the protesters, telling them to defund the police. Right, guys, Pontius Pilate was a cop. Plain and simple. And let's be honest, Kyle Rittenhouse would have shot a brown Middle Eastern socialist like Jesus because he was scary. Yeah. <laughs> Wearing those sandals, you know, sharing his love turning water into wine, using alchemy. Who is this guy? Too much magic, that's what I say. Wasn't married either. <laughs> Wasn't married. 
out of wedlock, this son of a bee. We need to start a give, send, go for Jesus to find him a good wife is what we need to do. Cook him up with a farmers farm. only. Okay. Farmers only. Farmers only? Yeah. Get him on that. <laughs> but look, this type of treatment isn't anything new either, right? A few years ago, uh, two anti-racist protesters were stabbed by neo-Nazis in Sacramento. The police worked in tandem with neo-Nazis to track down and arrest the activists, right? And the, and the cops basically looked at them and was like, hey, look, we know not to kick someone when they're down, but there's nothing saying we can't arrest them for being stabbed, okay? <laughs> their, their crime was being too dumb not to get stabbed, so gotta get them off the streets. After his shooting in Charleston, South Carolina, Dylan Roof, the pro-apartheid teen, was taken to Burger King on his way to jail. Look, unless these cops were planning a, a long con where they slowly filled his arteries with whatever passes for meat at Burger King, I'm pretty sure this doesn't show law, that law enforcement actually cares about black America. And these are just the instances that we can see, right? There's no data being collected on how much police are actually working with white supremacists and far right uh, mil militia organizations. Cops don't go through any sort of racial sensitivity program and they only get reprimanded if the racism goes public. There's no rule in place that saying that cops can't associate with the militia or white supremacists, which just goes to show that, you know, justice truly is blind, but somehow still biased. <laughs> you know, she, since she can't see, some of her other senses must be heightened to the point where she can smell melanin. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of makes her like the most useless and weirdly racist member of the X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, irony must not be taught in law schools either. All right, that joke didn't land. That's fine. That's a very niche joke because the X-Men are an allegory to the civil rights movement. That's fine. I thought some nerds would get it, but you guys let me down today. It's okay. I'm not going to hold it against you guys. I'm not, I, you know, I'm not going to like stay up thinking about the fact that I wrote this joke for, for the nerds, you know. <laughs> Fucking bailed on me. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but more than anything, federal law enforcement, federal and local law enforcement have an obsessive fear with one particular group named Antifa. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Not them, yes. Here they come out of the darkness. Screaming Black Lives Matter, you guys. <laughs> now, according to this current administration and all law enforcement, Antifa is a coordinated group of anarchists whose goal is to, to, to bring the government down from the outside. Yeah, clearly, <laughs> clearly Antifa is a very un-American nonprofit getting tax breaks out the wazoo for their descent. <laughs> Just kidding. Now, in reality, Antifa is, is what you call someone that is anti-fascist or against fascism, right? These, these people are against the totalitarian use of law enforcement to track people's movement and charge them for crimes they didn't commit, right? They, they dissent against archaic and racist laws. These are people that stand in solidarity with the working class and ensure equality for everyone. They stand for the constitutional rights for all of us, not just a select few. Jesus was anti-fascist. True story. Now, this is one of those things that you either are or aren't, right? If you are for the totalitarian control of all human lives under the ubermensch, then you're a fascist. <laughs> And I would wager to bet that most fascists are also narcissists. 
who think that they're like the best human, right? <laughs> and if you're openly against the anti-fascist movement, you basically declared yourself a fascist. And that's kind of what the Trump administration did, right? Tr Trump tweeted out that Antifa was a terrorist organization, just like how the FBI considers the insane clown posse a terrorist organization. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Look, guys, the only difference between ICP and Antifa is clown makeup and an insatiable thirst for Fago. <laughs> That's it. The insane clown poshy is anti-fascist. Whoop whoop, everybody. Whoop whoop. <laughs> Fago, <laughs> official drink of the rioters. <laughs> the official drink of the rioters, yeah. That's a sponsorship for, for that nonprofit that they started. <laughs> Look, at least, at least this tweet was carefully thought out. It was a carefully thought out plan by the Trump administration, right? I'd hate to think that this tweet was sent without looking at any of the facts. Oh, wait. Turns out Attorney General... <laughs> William Barr received an open source intelligent report right before the tweet was sent out about right wing white supremacist group that specifically stated them wanting to kill cops and instruct yep. members to make Molotov cocktails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After he received this report, Barr just looked at the people in the room and said, what flavor of cocktails do you think it is? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's lemon? Because I really like lemon. I'm a big lemon guy. Big <laughs> lemon guy. But like this obsessive fear over Antifa makes sense when the entirety of law enforcement has become the long arm of fascism itself. Right. Vadusha Tala of the American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, says even though the agencies may include in some of these documents a disclaimer that they are not targeting First Amendment activities as such, if you look at what they're doing, it's clear that there is no criminal activity that they can point to to justify the overbroad collection, the overboard collection of monitoring of protests. They have no basis to do that. The ACLU is anti-fascist. But people have feared the Antifa threat throughout this administration, despite lack of proof of them causing any sort of violence at protests, right? The DHS claimed that these protests are our nation's period of darkness, and that these people would, would take over government facilities and law enforcement headquarters there's literally no proof that they would do that, but there's repeated proof of right-wing violence, but they use that to target protesters, which is the ultimate form of gaslighting around, right? There's... <laughs> They've also claimed that socialists from Venezuela and Nicaragua are coming up to join these protesters, and they've made over... <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? They've made over... They're swimming in money. They're swimming in money in Venezuela with all those <coughs> sanctions we put on them. They're just, <laughs> they're just killing it. And not just that, they paid 200 arrests uh, for riot-related threats. And they also even thought of arresting the band Three Days Grace because they have a song named Riot. <laughs> That's a true fact, you guys. It's on their second album. It's a pretty good song. <laughs> Have they heard of the band Quiet Riot? Oh, don't even, don't, don't tell them. They could be watching this. <laughs> Quiet Riot. <laughs> I, do, I do kind of find it funny that they think that socialists from South America are coming to the States <laughs> to protest, right? Like, like the FBI, <laughs> like the FBI legitimately believes that socialists bought a plane ticket from South America, flew into America, the epicenter of this pandemic to join a protest, started a riot, and then flew back to South America. They got no other shit going on, man. <laughs> yeah, they got nothing else going on. You know, they're not trying to fight like American economic <laughs> sanctions slowly destroying their country or anything. They don't 
Uh, got that going on. Or instead of doing that, maybe they could protest in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement in America, just like they did everywhere else around the globe. <laughs> this fear of anti-fascism in American society, in society is so high that a San Francisco lawyer sent a letter to the police claiming that a terror group was looking for legal representation. The letter was sent by an activist that wanted to see if these lawyers were willing to represent falsely arrested protesters pro bono. The San Franciscan lawyer goes on to call them pieces of shit and kept his identity anonymous over the fear of being disbarred. And guys, this fear really makes a lot of sense because if we know anything about terrorists is they're very polite and they're vigilant letter writers. <laughs> guys, remember all those letters they wrote to take away our freedoms? <laughs> Postmarked and everything. Now, the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness has deemed an 80-year-old left-wing guild of lawyers an anarchist extremist subgroup. Lawyers that uphold the law and fight for justice and equality can't be anarchists which is a political belief that hinges on the lack of laws in government. Because I really feel like we need to defund the police in New Jersey so that their citizens can like buy a dictionary. Very important. But as of right now, uh, Antifa is higher up on the terror watch list than ISIS. You know, that the actual terror organization that has public beheadings and has bombed cities across the globe. Yes. Antifa is worse than them because they're on the streets asking for things like justice and equality. According to the DS DHS, if we get justice and equality, then the terrorists will win. Quite literally. <laughs> Quite literally, right? According to the DHS, protest and civil disobedience is worse than murder. I mean, sure, those terrorists extinguish the flames of life, but, but these folks, in Antifa, are, they're not listening to platitudes, and then they made a sign, possibly with glitter. <laughs> <laughs> and they wrote a catchy chant, those bastards. Those bastards. So you tell me who's really worse, huh? Now, at the moment, there's only one white supremacist group uh, that's on the terror watch list, and it is a nationalistic Russian militia group in Ukraine. But groups like the Ku Klux Klan and the Boogaloo Boys are not, right? The Boogaloo Boys are a right-wing extremist militia group that's anti-government and anti-cop. And sure, their name sounds like a country folk pop doo boy band that, you know, probably have racist undertones with their hit singles like your white alabaster skin is all I need. But rest assured, you guys, they definitely are militia, right-wing militia with very violent intents. Now in city after city, the Boogaloo Boys have been caught with vehicles full of assault weapons and explosives. They've also made threats of attacking and killing cops on social media that has been monitored by law enforcement. Yet the Boogaloo movement continues to thrive with no interference from law enforcement. One of the reasons law enforcement doesn't go after the Boogaloo Boys is veterans. The Naval Criminal Investigation Service, or NCIS, says racially motivated violent extremist movements that subscribe to Boogaloo have engaged in conceptual discussions about recruiting military or former military members for their perceived knowledge of combat training. The NCIS cannot discount the possibility of DOD-affiliated individuals sympathetic to or engaged in the Boogaloo movement. And this was proven in the case of Steve Carrillo, or Carrillo, um, if I'm mispronouncing his name, I'm sorry. Uh, but Steve Carrillo was an uh, Air Force sergeant who was part of the Boogaloo movement, and he attacked a sheriff's office in Oakland, California. He was part of a Boogaloo social media group uh, talking about how to use the anger of the protests to kill cops. He wanted to exploit the Black Lives Matter movement to fuel the Boogaloo Boys agenda. And yet, this movement and anyone associated with it is not on a watch list. Rather, law enforcement goes ahead and uses this as an excuse to track 
and attack protesters. FBI agent Michael German says terrorism is distinguished from other violence by its, by its political nature and result, as a result, counterterrorism is often highly politicized. Here we're seeing this, this politic politicization of counterterrorism is being reflected in intelligence documents that are going out and are intended to inform state and law enforcement on the ground. Overall, what you see is a strange sensationalization of Antifa threats and that doesn't exist when looking at Boogaloo documents. And look, there is a very good reason for this. The defund the police movement is interlinked with the Black Lives Matter and anti-fascist movements are talking about taking monetary resources out of the hands of the police, which will eventually lead to defunding the military as well. These movements are going after the one and only religion in America, money. The Boogaloo boys and the white supremacists are not, right? They're, guys, they're just going after human lives, right? So, and why, sh why, should, why should the system care about that? Huh? Okay, you can't run the stock exchange on human lives, you guys. Or can you? Now, German goes on to say that the far-right extremists have been killing members of law enforcement uh, and the general public for decades. And these threats and acts of violence were proven to be happening at the same time as the Trump administration's crackdown on leftist activist groups. Far-right extremists have killed upwards of 202 people in America, while Islamic terror has killed 140. Meanwhile, there are no deaths in America that can be related to anti-fascists. This should easily put people in the white supremacy and far-right militias like Boogaloo higher on the terror watch list than ISIS, Antifa, and also the insane clown posse. <laughs> <laughs> We don't treat international terrorism any more important or any more of a threat than domestic. Yeah. But there has been infrastructure in place in international terrorism for, you know, obviously a couple of decades now. Uh, and that there's just more tripwires. The other part uh, that is on the domestic terrorism side, that's a, a, usually a, an American citizen who's <laughs> exercising, at least in the beginning, First Amendment rights. Again, the, you have the right to hate because now we have to wait until we see that there is some propensity to commit an act of violence to do with that ideology. In international cases, you don't have to wait. And it's all because of a statute known as material support. Now, this is what the arguments all boil down to, right? The First Amendment rights. And like this FBI agent said, for, hate is covered under the First Amendment, right? So, so I can go out and say, I hate raisins. And that's completely acceptable because I do. Uh, I find them an abomination to grapes, okay? <laughs> but when I claim that all the vineyards must burn for they are the source of all the raisins, that's not exercising my First Amendment rights. That's planned arson. <laughs> and also uh, probably a crime against good wine. <laughs> But the FBI likes to claim that they're going after violent offenders, yet far-right militias who have expressed violent intents are free and seemingly protected in a lot of these states, despite a metric ton of that material support that they love to, to talk about so much. Nahina Shamsi of the ACLU National Security Project says there are instances in which people engaging in white supremacist violence get the benefit of the doubt as potential lone offenders while people of color and those who dissent against government injustice are smeared as threats with guilt by association. The hypocrisy in law enforcement, both locally and federally, is steeped in racism. Their distrust and fear over the anti-fascism movement makes them fascists. But the scales of justice are very clearly tipped towards white supremacy. What we need now more than ever is a transparent and equal justice system. This will show us that the rule of law does and will apply to each and every one of us rather than just a select few. We shouldn't be condemning things like the blue leaks. We should be learning from them to improve our justice system and make better laws and better systems.
the end. Thank you very much, everybody. Yay! Yeah. Well done, Chris. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on what, when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -H. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you